Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Lord Farage, how does that sound? A peerage for the party's acting leader, Nigel Farage. Of UKIP, of course, could be on the cards if one of the three frontrunners in the leadership contest wins it. Well, I'm joined now by one of those frontrunners, Paul Nuttall, the former deputy leader of UKIP and leadership candidate. So, uh, what's this, uh, Lord Farage of the dog and duck? Uh, you think, <laughs> think it'd be a good idea? Well, Lord well, Leave. Uh, I think it'd be a great idea. I mean, UKIP should have been given more peerages, uh, or peerages indeed, actually, uh, since uh, 2010. Uh, uh, David Cameron obviously had a visceral hatred of us, and we were never awarded one. I think maybe now with Theresa May uh, in the seat, we may well get peerages. And if we do get peerages, uh, then Nigel Farage should be the first on the list because of the achievements. Small problem is he keeps saying, no, 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 it's absolutely out of the question. He said it to me a couple of times on this programme. Well, if he's offered it, we'll see what he says internally within the party. I think it would be a fitting tribute to the man who gave us Brexit. You know, even though Nigel hasn't been in the House of Commons, mm. he has probably been uh, the most influential British politician since the 10th century. But wouldn't it give, I mean, you want it to be you, wouldn't it be giving the next leader of UKIP a bit of a problem? As, you know, as we all know, Nigel Farage has been a mm. huge figure in the political firmament for so many years now, dominates UKIP. He's been leader or acting leader four times now. Doesn't he have to step back a bit if he's got a platform in the House of Lords he's overshadowing the leader if it's you I don't think so I mean let's not forget I've had a huge platform in UKIP as well I mean I've been the party chairman uh, I've been the deputy leader I've been head of policy but you know uh, I mean uh, if we know, did bother but, to poll it but, but, I mean but, you, know, you know who'd finish first you or Nigel <laughs> Obviously, across the country, more people yeah. know Nigel Farage, but the two of us have been the face of UKIP probably uh, for the past decade. We work closely together, uh, and we will continue to work closely mm. together if I am elected as the leader. Yeah, but the uh, continuity uh, Nigel candidate is Raheem Kassam, isn't he? He's, that's who Nigel's backing. Uh, Nigel isn't backing anyone in this election, and I don't think it would be right that he mm. did so, because as the party leader, he shouldn't be influencing how the party votes. And look, you know, m my track record with Nigel is there for everyone to see. Uh, we came at this together uh, and the both of us sorted out the last time UKIP was in an existential crisis in 2008 and we took us from 0% in the polls to finish in second in the European elections okay, the following so year. So there are many shades uh, within the, the leadership candidates now about which uh, direction and how much emphasis uh, UKIP should have on so many important issues. Now we want to put some flesh on the bones of your policy yeah. beliefs. First of all uh, we've got some clips of you talking about the, the refugee crisis of course very very important at the moment given what's going on in the or the end of the so-called jungle camp in Calais and uh, well, this is what you've said about uh, refugees. I want to see if you still uh, stick with them Mr Nuttall. One of the founding principles of the European Union Mr Timmermans is free Freedom and movement of people. What we're probably allowing in now is freedom of movement of jihad. And I fear in the future, in the very near future, we will all have blood on our hands as a result. So you think, I mean, amongst that's freedom of movement, but yeah. even amongst the refugees, there, there could be those that want to do harm to the UK. Do you know what happened a couple of weeks after that speech? Paris. Okay? I was absolutely right in what I said. Uh, and the other issue regarding the refugees is we need to find out if they are actually refugees or whether they're economic migrants. Or jihadis. Or indeed jihadis. I mean, ISIS have made it perfectly clear what their intention is, and it is to flood the European continent with jihadis. And we've seen what's happened in Brussels. We've, uh, uh, we've seen what's happened in Paris. I mean, if we don't get a grip on this, then I do fear there will be more attacks so, on the line. So on the people, let's refer to the jungle camp, all the people who've come in, and some of them, uh, as we know, uh, it's questionable whether they're children or yeah. not. Do you think we should be letting any of them in? And today we've got the call from President Hollande to, to take, um, well, 1,500 more. Uh, well, I think we should be checking their age. And as I say, I, you know, I, I'm not sure how we do do that, but I, I believe it is not beyond the wit of man to check the age of these people. Uh, and if they're not children, they shouldn't be coming in. Because let's not forget, these people are breaking international law. They're breaking the Geneva Convention, mm -hmm. and they're also bre breaking the uh, Dublin Protocol, which is part of EU law, whereby you have to claim asylum in the sphere safe country in which you land. These people should be dispersed in France. NHS, of course, huge in British politics, comes top or close to top in uh, the surveys of so many people's concerns. Now, you believe that there should be, I don't know if you still believe, that there should be more uh, private involvement in it. Uh, this is another clip of you. 
I believe that the NHS is a monolithic hangover from days gone by. And unfortunately, we're becoming, or fortunately, shall I say, we're becoming an older population. And quite frankly, I would like to see more free markets introduced into the health service because this is the way it becomes. Oh, uh, yes. No, let's let's, let's let's face reality here. This is where it has to go. Well, I mean, we're, we, and we're just to explain to our viewers, and, and to you, I'm sure you're aware, we, we, we put the bleep in there, not because we're bleeping out what you're saying, because the, uh, the audience reaction there involved yeah. some, some pretty fruity language, it must be said. Do you still believe more free well, market I'm, involvement in the NHS? Uh, that was a hustings in 2011 and a parliamentary by-election in which I stood. Uh, the hustings was flooded with, with hard-left activists. Look, what I have said about the NHS is simply this. I believe it needs to be streamlined. It cannot be right that 51% of people who work in the NHS in England are not clinically qualified. It's too big, it's cumbersome, and where I do believe we could uh, have more free markets is, is in places like procurement, whereby the NHS itself is paying sometimes 10 to 30 times over the odds for drugs. If you brought in a private company, right. they could, you could hire and fire them on results that they got for the British But people. the streamlining's uh, interest, interesting then. Do you then uh, go along, I mean, following that naturally, if it's smaller, it can deal with fewer people, that those that can no, afford can, it no, should, no, no. should get some kind of no, no, insurance, no, no, no. and then that's Hang the way on. they... No. They take the burden off the NHS. What I was talking about, where I'm talking about streamlining, isn't streamlining in the sense of cost. We should be spending more money on the NHS, and UKIP's uh, commitment in its last manifesto was £3 billion a year. What I want to see is that money spent on doctors and nurses, not middle management and pen pushers. Now, um, you've been deleting quite a lot of your social media uh, activity. Is that so? Uh, well, uh, no, yes, you have. Well, nothing at all. I don't think so, no. You've got no, no, no skeletons there. I mean, if it comes to this, this real scrutiny of what I, you've been saying. I, I, I don't believe I've been deleting anything off my social media. Maybe you've got the wrong candidate. OK, what, about, well, what, what are your views on abortion, then? Uh, I, I believe that I would reduce uh, the, the, the number of weeks, probably down to 12 weeks. I've been pretty open about that, but that isn't going to be UKIP policy when I come uh, to, to take on the leadership if I'm elected. You know, what we, we're quite committed to is holding national referendums. If a certain percentage of British people sign a petition, it would trigger a referendum. It's called direct democracy. I have my opinions on abortion. Other people within the, other, other people within the party have different opinions. Well, would you opinions. have a referendum quite, on that? I mean, like, you're saying it's a person and belief, would you have a referendum on that in one of these direct um, direct referenda you're talking about? Well, well, that would be for the British people to decide. We would open all of this kind of thing up because we believe in direct democracy, we believe in referenda, and we believe in following the people. And you'd have one on capital punishment? Well, if enough people decided that that was required, then so be it. Look, you know, I'm relaxed about all of these kind of sure. things. In terms of, of, I mean, you're in, in favour terms, of bringing in, back in terms, certain, in terms of certain capital, crimes you want to bring back. Of, in terms of capital punishment, I've gone, uh, I've been quite open, uh, that I believe in capital punishment for the killers of children, people like Ian Huntley, mm -hmm. Ian Brady and whatnot, which is what the majority of the British people think. What about climate change? I mean, you, what effect do you believe? I mean, do you believe it's happening? And what effect do you believe that uh, humankind is having on making it happen? Uh, I believe that the climate has always changed uh, and you, you, no one can deny that but what I do question is the effect that man is having on the climate I mean you know why was the globe warmer a thousand years ago than it is now why was the globe warmer two thousand years ago than it is now um, you know I, I think there needs to be far more research into this before we make leaps into uh, pushing policies like the climate change act for example which harm our economy and lastly, just Donald Trump. We know Nigel Farage is very keen on the, seeing him uh, elected, if possible, in the United States. You must be heartened about the latest furore with Hillary Clinton in those emails. And do you, and do you think that there, there are some of the accusers about Donald Trump and uh, what he's been doing to alleged um, to be doing to some of those women, do you think some of them are making it up? I am quite uh, open that uh, I, I'm not a fan of either candidate in the American election. Uh, I would probably vote for the Libertarian candidate. But it's boys talk, I mean, you know, locker, locker room talk a lot of it. Um, I would never advocate that kind of language. Okay, Mr Nuttall, very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Paul Nuttall there. Um, a number of runners and riders. Let's come straight down to, to, to the chase. Who is going to be the next leader of UKIP? Well, probably Paul Nuttall, he's a favourite, but the one that has the backing, not very, very enthusiastic backing, but the ostensible backing of Nigel Farage is Raheem Kassam, uh, and also wow. Aaron Banks, a big donor, backs Raheem, have to say, not terribly enthusiastically, best of a rather weak lot. Tim? 
Uh, well, I think uh, not all should scrape through, but uh, uh, I interviewed all three of them this week, and it's interesting. By all we're three, you mean Mr. Nuttall, <coughs> Ms. Evans, and, and, and Mr. And Cassatt. Suzanne Evans as well, yes. And, you know, uh, this is the, the Trumpification of British politics. Mr. Kassam is a very lively character and knows how to make, it, make a few headlines. Um, <laughs> and uh, with a bit of money behind him, anything's possible. Um, you know, this is a guy who's been to the States, who's literally studied uh, what Trump has done. Uh, his was he involved with the Breitbart? Yeah, he, uh, he's on sort of website. secondment from, you know, he's, he's left Breitbart, you know, he's uh, I mean, for the time being. And the guy who was his line manager is one of Donald Trump's campaign uh, He is extraordinarily right-wing, Rahim. I mean, I'm told that mm. he allegedly keeps or kept a picture of Enoch Powell by his bed. Barry I mean, Goldwater is, is one <laughs> of his heroes, for example. He was talking about that to Very me this well. week. Uh, there are, of course, Peter Whittle, David Curtin, John Rees Evans are also other candidates, just in the interest of fairness there. I would su suggest, at least put out as a, as, a, as a hypothesis to you, Steve, Paul Nuttall is Labour's worst nightmare because they're more <laughs> vulnerable in the North Pole. Uh, uh, Nuttall's from Merseyside, working class background, performs well on television. He's a really good interviewee. He's, mm. he's one of the <clears throat> best of the interviewees around in politics at the moment. Mm. However, I, I think whoever gets it has a massive task. And the clip mm. of this Nigel Farage uh, satire partly shows why. Uh, his dominance was overwhelming. And he, in many ways, did a brilliant job at keeping the show on the road. The trouble for all new political parties is keeping it going is tough. Yes. A very different party, the SDP, uh, with all those glamorous figures in it, lasted eight years, was it? Something like that. And I think they're in real trouble at the moment um, because of the implosions we've been seeing in front of our eyes and the ideological splits and the personality clashes. And whoever gets it is going to face a very, very tough task. This could be the, this this could is be the like last Farage chance. primary. All three of the main contenders spent their time telling me what they would do in Nigel Farage, and they all want to put him in the House of Lords, and they were falling oh, over themselves story, yeah. to right. try and suck up to Farage, yeah. because that's the way you win this election. Still the Mr. Moneybags, Mr. Aaron Banks, who is yeah. he putting his money behind? Well, I mean, he said that he supports Rahim Kassam, but I know that uh, Mr. Banks is utterly fed up of the shenanigans in UKIP. He thinks that it's terribly disorganised, mm. dysfunctional, frankly doesn't want to have a great deal to do with it for the foreseeable okay. future. Well, it's not quite Trump v Clinton, but at least it is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting away with it all